Our next speaker is Dr. Thomas Brophy. I got to know Tom a couple years ago. He's uh, a deep thinking guy, uh, has a PhD uh, from the University of Colorado, and he's an astronomer. Uh, he worked on, it was the Voyager program, uh, so he, he's uh, really has a very good understanding of space, but much more than that. He's been a bit of an adventurer and explorer. We recently interviewed him on our radio show called Cosmic Influence that Jeff and I do. And uh, you can find that interview on there now. Where, and he talked about his recent trip where he just got back from Napta Playa. And I think he's gonna get in that today, but also show us some slides. So please give a warm welcome to Dr. Thomas Brophy. Is the mic on? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Walter. And thank you, Walter, for a very nicely organized conference. Yeah. So what am I going to talk about? Well, first, I'm going to give a brief uh, sort of uh, travelogue of an expedition that we made to a very remote area of Egypt in the southwestern corner of Egypt this April of this year with Robert Bouval and an Egyptian explorer named Mahmoud Marai. And then I'm going to talk about the Nabta Playa and this uh, origin map idea related to uh, my book on that topic. And I'm going to uh, mention a little bit integral theory, how these ideas can be fit together into a coherent whole, perhaps. Part of this origin map idea contains this idea of uh, a way to calibrate the zodiac, which is also the yuga cycle, and ongoing work. So I have about uh, three talks here and about time for about half a talk. So I'm going to talk six times as fast. No, I'm not going to. But I'm going to go very fast through parts of it that uh, you can just kind of watch, like watching TV or something. And then hopefully I'm going to slow down on a few parts that you can really wrap your mind around. So I just want to mention this inspirational quote that I had in the program, uh, why it's inspirational. In 1896, Swami Vivekananda emphasized honoring and respecting both the book within and the book without, the book within being uh, the wisdom of spiritual traditions and sages and the book without being uh, modern science. So this reintegration of that is part of this theme of integral philosophy that I think helps tie these things together. So our expedition this April um, was taking off from the western oases in Egypt going down here to this area called Gilf Kabir and this area called Gebel Uwainat in the corner of Egypt and actually in Sudan. And this is an area that uh, is really not fully explored. We were with uh, Mahmoud Marai who discovered two important sites down, down here last uh, November. So it's quite a fascinating region. And the sites we visited there were first a place called Jedefre's Sun Temple. We're now calling it a Sun Temple, actually, after we visited it. And a Bagnold Circle, way out here, near the Libyan border. And Marai's newly discovered cave. And this uh, Pharaonic cartouche, which is uh, down here. So uh, this is the really quick part, uh, the TV watching part. This uh, Jedefre Sun Temple, this place was discovered just uh, in 2001. We revisited it, and actually, Bouval first noticed that uh, it's facing due east, this uh, carved rock face over there. And uh, in the morning, before dawn, we got up and uh, went to measure this uh, horizon hill, we're calling it. And uh, there's this uh, clear, clearly defined notch 
and I took GPS measures, and we went back and found that uh, that notch very precisely uh, held the rising sun on the uh, equinox days, and the horizon hill spanned the uh, solstices. So we're calling it instead of the water mountain because there was a water sign and on the uh, face, uh, Jedefri's Sun Temple. Uh, and the central uh, hieroglyphs there has this uh, solar boat, solar barge. Solar barge us usually carries the usual suspects, you know, the major gods and goddesses. But here it contains these three stations, which I think may be the three stations of the sun on the horizon hill across the way. So we seem to have discovered that this is a sun temple, or the rediscovery of a prehistoric sun temple there in the desert. Uh, and we wrote a little paper about that. <clears throat> so next site, Bagnold Circle. Ralph Bagnold, 1929, <clears throat> British officer and uh, Egyptian explorer, discovered this uh, stone circle out there in the Libyan desert, and it's been visited only a few times since then. This, this area is so remote and so little visited. Uh, we were very happy to find it still uh, very little changed, and it had never been measured. It hadn't even been measured which way it was exactly north or, or east, you know, to look for possible astronomy. And we found this very nice uh, east-west alignment in that circle, and uh, Robert Vall was there too. Uh, and this very nice uh, north-south alignment uh, on the circle also, and suggestion that uh, this uh, horizon hill there might have been used for viewing the circumpolar stars, perhaps. This circle is probably about, uh, uh, dates to about 5,000 BC or, or earlier. That's the same age as the uh, Nabta Playa calendar circle, roughly, that I'm going to talk about later. And, uh, no, that was Robert Uval. <laughs> Robert Uval doing something. Uh, 10 kilometers as we left that circle, we discovered uh, this uh, remains, uh, the foundations of a Neolithic era house. There's lots out there. Uh, the famous, slightly famous cave of the swimmers from the, the movie, um, The English Patient. We took a quick visit there. It's Mirai. Uh, you got to see that. It's called the Cave of the Swimmers because it has these paintings of swimmers. Uh, and it's by a wadi that in that time when, when, the, um, when there were rains, uh, there's also giraffes on these caves and, and uh, animals that were in the uh, climate when it was nice and moist at that time. There's another cave that we visited that I started calling the Cave of the Shamans because it has this... Uh, what looks like shamanic imagery, these headless animals with uh, a shaman-like character coming out of them and uh, all the hands, but that's for another talk. Okay. Newly discovered cave. Last November, Mariah discovered this cave. Uh, and these, in this region, there's a motif of bulls and cows all over the place. And these all date to when the area was, uh, had a nice climate. It was before the era of hyper-aridity, extreme dryness, that went from about 3,600 or 4,000 BC to present. So these are all earlier than that, perhaps as much as 10,000 BC or so. Beautiful paintings. And this particular cave, in the back of it, there's actually a megalithic structure. This is about a two meter stone that was shaped and put there to make the back wall of the cave. This is the Gebel of Wynat, very remote, uh, slightly dangerous region. But uh, This is that uh, cartouche that was discovered way out there at Gebel of Wynat. There's a pharaonic cartouche, it's very faded, <coughs> but it has the name of a, a pharaoh and uh, an inscription there that says something like, incense offering from kingdom of Yam to the Pharaoh. So there was a uh, brief mentions in, in uh, Middle Kingdom texts, Egyptian texts, of something called the kingdom of Yam and expeditions to that kingdom.